live here. The camera is not on. I could hey, take everyone. mine out. We are here. Hello, 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 hit everyone. The, hit the red again. Let me see how I can do this and invite some friends. Hey there, Mr. Jeffrey Wright. Um, I want to do something real quick here. I'm leaning over, leaning in. So we are going to just go down the line here. Let some other people get on. We are very excited about what we are about to do here. And right now I am just going through this just to invite some folks on. We are about to have a nice hot topic conversation, if you will. Let me get this done. I know I'm looking a little crazy right now, but I am just wanting to invite a few people on so that they could talk back to us, if you will. And maybe some others will come on and get on and become a part of our set. Okay, we've got it done. All right. Hey there, Herbert and Jeffrey. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I just invited a few folks on. This is our first um, Unveiling Truth Table Talk. And one of the reasons why um, I felt that this was so important, um, because the book that I wrote some time ago in March, it has been such a blessing to so many people and it's still being a blessing to me because I often refer back to it every now and then, especially when I'm going through certain things. And I just found that it is something that I just want to share in a different kind of way. So I'm saying to some of you guys out there who have purchased the book, or who haven't purchased the book, that's a better choice of words, that this is definitely something that you want to get your hands on. And it is real life stuff. Even though me, um, I am Dr. Stephanie Birch. However, I am also Apostle Stephanie Birch. So I walk in a realm of ministry too. And it is scripture based, but it's real life stuff. And so what we want to do is um, begin our first segment of this platform, Table Talk, Unveiling Truth Table Talk. And with me on today, I have my dear friend, Gracie Ferguson. Um, she is someone that I have known for a very, very, very long time. And she is an awesome sister. She's uh, a psychologist. And Amen. And working. <laughs> In progress. In progress. I mean, she's got the degree level. She's just going on to the next step to do that. But she's also a realist, you know, on so many levels. And and just, you know, as as women, you know, we go through different things. So she from that psychologist standpoint, Stand. <laughs> if you will. You know, she helps me to kind of really think about things that normally I don't think about. And so what I just I wanted to do today was to um, present to some and uh, those that already know and introduce to others my book, Unveiling Truths. I'm pushing it really hard now because I'm actually working on the second one. However, this one here it has just really been a blessing. One of the reasons why we're doing this again, her and I, she's here. I'm, we're in Florida 
Tallahassee, Florida. Hi, and everybody. she's visiting me from New York. And um, we were just having a conversation um, about life and things that yes. we women go through. And, and not just women, but men as well, because brothers go through a lot of things too, you, you know, but just some of the things that we go through a lot of times, um, we don't realize that the things that we're going through, somebody else is going through the right. same thing. Right. And so a lot of times, even one time, you know, I had a gentleman, um, read my book and one of the things that he said was, um, you're saying things in the book that people think about, but they don't say. Right. And so sometimes when, you know, you say certain things and person have thought about it or have even been going through it. And sometimes people just looking for a way to kind of bounce some things off of you, give a little feedback on some situations. And this is what this platform is for. So we went live. The purpose was not really to go live on Facebook, but we decided to go live on Facebook so that if there are those that are on Facebook, um, and wanted you know to kind of talk back to us a little bit right um they have the opportunity to do so but yet we are we are kind of steering for a whole nother uh platform so what i wanted to start doing gracie you want to say something i'm doing a lot of talking no here. just hi everybody and <laughs> thank you for you know coming on as far as this is concerned this is like she said something new that we're introducing to everybody um Stephanie has um, broken open her YouTube page. So this will be something regular that will be going on. And um, all that will be introduced and um, given to you, you know, at the end of this, um, this, this segment. I also have a YouTube page that maybe she don't touch up on something, but me and her had a totally different conversation one day that I felt like needed to be recorded and my youtube page will also be you know we'll also let you know um all that at the end of the segment and i'm just so glad that she chose me to do her first segment with her that's a blessing so hope you guys will enjoy this and you know come on and say what you got to say don't hold nothing back any question that you want to ask or feel like you need to know you can ask us and definitely we will give you back the answer mm -hmm. Talk back to and as you can see, we were I'm repping oh, my yeah. unveiling oh, truth yeah. <laughs> bandana situation. Yes, the accessories. The, that, yes. Right. We have yes. the t-shirts as well. Yes. So and that she made. Um, if you will, I made the bandana, but she made the t-shirt. And so we, we have a whole product line behind the book and, and just services. It's this is a part of something much greater. Yes. Yes. So there are many components to yes. it, but right now we're we're just pushing right. and we just want to have some real talk about this book or something in the book. Right. And so the first thing I want to read, so what I'm going to do is just read a little something, then we're going to open up and just have a little dialogue. Again, right. anybody could join in that wants to um and 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 if you happen to see the recording you can always hit us back by way of comment box i'm not sure how this youtube thing works it does have but a comment she box right? knows how yeah. it goes comment box will always respond to you and again this is going to be something um that we're going to do i'm going to do once a week now um our topic for this evening um we had a conversation last night and we were talking about relationships and what is it that makes people stay in of course we were having the woman dialogue but what is it that makes women or and i'm going to say people because men kind of um fall into that same thing as well right stay in a relationship that is toxic if you will and so, um, and it led us into a whole kind of dialogue of so many things. And we're not going to cover all of that on tonight, no. but I just wanted to share um, something in my book and we can kind of um, go from there. 
Um, it reads, um, sometimes our problem is that we become so accustomed to operating within the realm of where we were in opposed to where we're going. It's easier for us to stay within the cycle of the past because we are familiar with that place. We actually fight to make excuses to stay. Although it's, dis it's a dysfunctional place, you've resided there for so long it feels normal and natural. This is a prime example of feeling that you've made it through when you actually haven't. What happened is you have grown accustomed to medicating yourself while in, in with, with substances like drugs, alcohol, reckless behavior, sex, food, church, shopping, etc. And y'all know how, you know, we can, we can use so many different things to pacify ourselves when we going through stuff. And, and one of our major um, things that we talked about is, is, is how we use sex. Right. To in, involve, you know, as, as um, a pacifier, let's put it that way, for that which isn't right. And you got a whole lot of church folk out there that um, will consume themselves with church. Right. And there is, you know, this program, that program, you know, Wednesday night, uh, Thursday night, Friday night, then Sunday all day, because <laughs> they don't want to come home and deal with the reality no. of their home and their lifestyle situations. All of which becomes the allies for your hurts, pains, disappointments. One or more of those substances or outlets have now become your comforter. You are now who you have become pleased with, so you think. You no longer feel the pain of it because you have created a mirage of your victory and what's artificial or fake now appears real. What am I saying? I'm going to stop right there because what would you say when a person have created a mirage of 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 what is what is real when it's not? You know, I'm, I'm saying, you know, before I um, let you go, I'm a, right. what, what I feel with this, with the mirage part is sometimes we are in such a toxic situation, you know, relationship. It could be friendship, you know, marriage or otherwise. The mirage that we create is something in our minds, what we want to see, how we want to feel. You, you know what I mean? A right. lot of times it could be who you want to be with. This ain't that cat. But, you know, because the cat is in your mind, you kind of picturing that um, as it is and you dealing with somebody else. And even though that somebody treats you horrible, they're disrespectful, they're right. rude, you, you know what I mean? Um, they, they're not giving you or appreciating you. But because of what you created in your mind about this person, you take the beating, you take the disrespect, you take the ridicule, you take all of that and you still hang on in there. Right. Now, I'm going to take it to the psychological level where people um, are comfortable with the life that they're living because they have fear of moving on and failing. Okay. Growth is failing. You know, the more you fail, the more you grow because you realize that that one failure, there has to be a fix to that failure. So that's also in relationships. We get so comfortable with the relationship we're in because we feel like the next relationship that we try to look for, we're going to look for aspects that was in that old toxic relationship. We're scared of moving on. You know, the the there's a scientist called Pavlov, and I'm just going to bring you to mm -hmm. the situation where he said that people fear being alone. They fear being unwanted. You know, that has nothing to do with the things that it takes for you to live and survive. Food, water, shelter. No, that's not what they fear the most. They fear the most of being unwanted. And that's in a toxic relationship. They rather stay there, especially if I'm not even going to get into the realm of you. If you have kids and you're, he's the only one working and what am I going to do? I can't go into a shelter. I can't bring my kids. They're not going to eat. They're not going to survive. Kids feed and live off of you. Mm -hmm. If they see that that one piece of bread filled you, they'll be okay with that one piece of bread as long as you got them out of danger. 
you know, they'll learn to survive with you in um, the realm of the situation that you put them in. So if you're in a toxic relationship and you're in a toxic relationship with your kids, most people stay because they don't want to take their kids away from that comfortability that he may be um, providing. providing for them and that children. That's food, shelter, water, clothes, whatever the case may be. But think of it as also in being unwanted. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be even a situation of even the kids. The kids is being abused if you're being abused. But like I said, I don't want to get into that. Yeah. But like she said, we're, 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 it's a comfortability. Mm -hmm. And we're afraid of coming out of that relationship because there's a possibility that <laughs> there's some situations <laughs> where you got to leave right. where you at. Right. You know, you got to move and you got to go to a new area. Mm -hmm. Now you leave him with no clothes, you leave him with nothing, and you going to start anew. And people don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they're afraid of losing what they have. Because you can have a setup where you got diamonds, pearls, your Louis Vuittons, your Gucci's, you know, all that. But you being abused. Yeah. So I don't want to lose my bling bling to have to go and have nothing. To be happy, I'd rather stay and have my negative situation, but I got all my things with it. Mm -hmm. And that's where it goes back to creating that mirage, as it says in the book. We create a mirage of your victory and what's artificial or fake, which is that happiness being artificial or fake now Correct. appears real. And it reads on to say, what doesn't feel good now feels good. And you begin to settle for less than your worth. So even in situations where you have, like she said, all of the bling blings and, you know, um, the, 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 the Louis Vuittons and, Correct. you know, the household situation is still toxic. It's still not a good situation, Correct. but because of the mental rem rem uh, mirage that we created, we stay Correct. in it and we don't move from it. Correct. It reads on in the book and we're coming from um, my book, Unveiling Truths, and we're talking about how we sometimes stay in toxic situations and we create, you know, reasons why. You now become afraid to take the stand that will demand change because you fear losing what you had, just like she just said, and have labeled is, even though it is not. It is not what? It is not what brings a smile to your face. It is not what gives you that sigh when something feels good. It is not something that you look forward to at the end of your day. More importantly, it does not please or satisfy your soul. However, there is one area that it does satisfy, which is the physical area of satisfaction. And so that brings me to our next part and what we had talked about on yesterday. You know, a lot of times people just don't keep it real. Yes, I am a woman of faith. Glory to God. However, I deal with real life situations. Correct. I go in the prisons three times a month. And those women are there because of real life situations. Correct. And so we can't be so um, holy. Glory to God. I see your mommy on there. Oh, we really? can't be so holy <laughs> on there. And I just want to say, hey, everybody, um, 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 Ra Raquel, Sabine, um, Prophet Obadiah, Apostle Obadiah, Dr. Obadiah, and Mommy Joe, and, and Cousin Karen, and, and Willie Mae here. I got your daughter here with me. <laughs> um, but going back to um, what we were saying, that we sometimes that is one of the main areas and that's our focal point that we wanted to get to on today because we have a lot of young people that are getting into these relationships and and you know are being abused are Correct. being mistreated disrespected you you know what i mean but somehow they don't find it uh, uh necessary to come up out of it and, and what is the hole there? You, you know what I mean? And I and I believe, you know, one of the things is that soul tie, which goes to the next part of that I wanted to share with you. It says satisfaction incomplete. Making love 
yet without love or having sex thinking that it's love when it's, it's far from that. What does all that mean? Both scenarios simply mean having meaningless yet satisfying sex. Meaningless sex is just the act of fulfilling your fleshly needs or desires without having the proper emotional and or affectionate attachment to the other party. Complete intimacy satisfies holistically and not in parts and pieces. Where you know and when you know and understand the true intent of intimacy, it's hard to continue indulging in that which is not totally fulfilling. Yes, it feels good. So we combine the feeling with emotions and place it in a category that it shouldn't be in because it's just sex that feels good and, and oftentimes real good. That really good feeling is not in love with you, but you begin to fall in love with it and dismiss all the other major factors that makes true intimacy complete. And now I'm going to park right there. Now, Gracie, well, from, from your from your um, psychological standpoint, if you will, what would you say um, makes us, you know, women? Because I'm gonna include us because I've right. been there. You, you know what I mean? Right. Um, in a relationship, you know, doesn't work. It, it wasn't working. It wasn't a good thing. It was toxic. Let's just put it that way. Right. It was toxic. But I stayed, you know, because well, you gotta, the, the intimacy part was Well, you got to break it down into age. You know, like you said, the younger generation. So what is the age cutoff that you trying to um, say? Because you got the younger generation where, let's say, under 30. Because psychologically, and please, men, do not get offended. You know, um, it has been written that you still growing brain wise you know thinking wise logically wise up until the age of 30 men men's brain is not fully developed like women's are up until the age of 30. so you on a psychological sense um breaking it down into age 30 and under like you said the disrespect whether it's from him or her they're going back and forth with it with, with each other calling each other names carrying on and then taking it to the sexual aspect you know um if we just got into an argument and we going back and forth and we calling each other all kind of bees and carrying on, i am not going to bed with you so what you're you know? saying is the age is you because i you said something concerning the age but now yes. even with regards to that i see you know that's an immaturity level right however you have some grown behind men that's over 40. Right. That still act like, you know, men, you know, are immature. You, right. you know no. what I mean? Right. But their partner should not be sitting there taking it. So the scenario you're trying to give me is, let's say, give me a scenario. 40 year old man living, you know, two people living together and they both in their 40s and you know that there's disrespect going on as the situation is and what's making them stay and, you know, are they making love or are they not making love? You know, I, you know what I'm saying? Unless I know the situation, but that's, that's, that's... Okay, so let's put it this way in general. And I'm, and it's just not so much because, you know, while you were talking, what just came to me right. that... You have a lot of men that's going through hell right. with some crazy behind women. D yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And so it's not just about the woman that would go through, but you have men that go through too. So my my um what what I was, you know, um trying to convey here that sex is just sex and we right. sometimes combine emotions with that which feels good right. and we call it love 
when it has nothing to do with that. Right. You, you know what I mean? Right. And so now getting back to what you were saying, what I'm thinking, you went into the age factor of Correct. it all. And so, of course, you know, they it is it is um, um, statistics show right. that women mature faster than men. Right. So what you uh, I'm trying to get to what you were trying to say the fact that if you're dealing with a younger age let's say from teens to maybe 25 right. you know that's a that's a lower immature level so Correct. they get involved with that so the the female for instance um um falls in love correct you you know because She's a, a female because you know we are the we are the catchers, right? Well, men, you will. men too, right? You know what I'm saying? We can't sit here and actually say that it's only women, right? Who that's, fall in that's love what I'm and saying. It's, catcher men right. too, right? But you know. What, but what my point is is how do you, um, you know, what can you say or what can we say that would convey the positive message that. Just because you have a sex don't mean that that person is in love with you, be it male or female, because at this point it's not about gender. You, you know what I mean? Right. Because you can have a cat fall in love with a young lady, you know, quicker right. than the lady fall in love with it. And sometimes you have that woman that is, is you know, young girl, she could have been abused. You you know in the past, and that's what she's going to continue. And to look she for. will continue. The man for that. is the same thing. He could have had a woman that um he was totally in love with and she turned around and hurt him he's not going to look for that feeling again so he's gonna do sexless love or um you know loveless sex because he don't want to get into that situation to maybe build him up and the same result happens as far as that situation is concerned so that's mm -hmm. the answer to what you're saying mm -hmm. men they been through something yeah men and no woman right and, and, I see and all herbert, the women. herbert said is he see a lot of misplaced identity um I, i'm when you say misplaced identity I, i'm not clear about your statement but um if I, I i don't even want to respond to that because i'm unclear of when you say misplaced identity if you're speaking male or female, and that's why we're trying to say it's not just men, it's not just women, it's both. It's both. Right. You, you know what I mean? Women, men fall in love and, and get had just like women fall right. in love Correct. and get had. So that's why we're trying to deal with both. And again, coming from the discussion, coming from what um, I wrote in my book, how a lot of times, because I've seen that, you, you know, and even when I was young, you know, um, the first time and, and you know, God putting me out there on on front street when i the first time i had sex let's say let's put it that way and i was only 15 years old of course creeping out of the house you know i still had to be inside before that that street light came on you know what i mean but we'll find time in doing it and i i wasn't i was in love before i did that you know what i mean but the person that that it happened with was far from that it wasn't about love it was about conquering you you know what i mean right. it was about it, it was about getting this young girl who was beautiful and she was a virgin and i knew that and you know that conquering thing you know and after that happened i fell head over heels but he was far from that he wasn't in no love right, he wasn't no. trying to be in no love <laughs> you know first right. of all he was older than i you know what i mean had right. other women young girls already so i was just something another notch on the belt you, you right. know so i'm coming from i'm saying from that perspective and that's where i believe you know everything in my book came from something that i personally you know kind of dealt with if you will and, right. and personally experienced or know people who pretty much have and that's where it came to the part of having fallen in love with an emotion or a feeling and that emotion and feeling ain't in love with you and so i believe that that sometimes is is what the causing is of of it being one love being right. one-sided if you will herbert said from being sexual abused even seeing things growing up that's true you know those are those are different um aspects right of what makes a person drive what what drives them in a certain way and you that's mean? what we're talking about as far as the the negativity is concerned 
can cause you to um, seek the loveless sex and the because of past experiences. You know, it, ha it negative past experiences will cause you to continue to want to um, continue on that negative path. And that includes getting these men or women that um, will help you stay on that negative path yeah. as far as sex is concerned, as far as um, um, not having to fall in love. You had some situations where the man is um, <coughs> um, out there going with people that he know is not, he's not going to fall in love with and vice versa. Women do the exact same thing. So, you know, what, you know, we, <laughs> it's negative. <laughs> right. You know, it, it, that's what yeah. that session, you know, this is exactly all about. It's, mm -hmm. it's negative love and um, loveless sex, you know. It, it, and you're right. And Herbert said, men, men begin to close up and all they see is him. And women too yes and Men, women yeah. women um sometimes act that same way and goes back to that mirage right because now you're operating from a figmentation of your imagination that which you created to protect yourself from certain things things that you feel things that you've gone through you you know what i mean i often tell people that you know people get it twisted that because you are a christian or you are a woman of god or a man of god that you don't have desires anymore. You, you know what I mean? It don't turn off. God no. created you the way that he <laughs> created you. You know what I mean? You just learn right. to control your flesh and don't allow your flesh to control you. Right. You, you know what I mean? So you have to learn how to you know, deal with that. But when you've gone through, you know, major things like what, what he was saying, you know, being molested and things like that, that thing burns within it you does. unless but you one, get the help that you need but you one know, thing to I get can, it out. One thing I can tell you, and um, from a man's point of view, the love, your first love is your mother. Okay. Once that's burnt, it's going to be Majority of the time, it's going to be really, really hard for you to, um, and I'm not talking about at two or three. I'm talking about as you're growing up and um, if you're in a home where women too, but I'm going to take it from a man's point of view now. If you're in a home and um, you didn't have that male figure to help you learn and understand what it is to be a man and to properly love a woman then you're growing up with a lot of toxicity in you as far as um if i wasn't loved by the woman that should have loved me then everybody else behind that and that's something that's in the back of your head it's not a sentence that you're going to come up with by yourself it's uh um it's something that is learned it's 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 an ep it's continues on it's real hard to fall in love and do it the right way. Now, with that being said, I'm not saying that it, it's not done. Or it but, always um, happens the right way. Or it always happens the right way. But when that first love is broken or not there, then what you learned coming up is a majority of the time negative. You know, it love people, you can't put a definition on love or how to love somebody or which way should I do it? Because it's 50,000 different ways. Well, I want to say, now I hear what you're saying from the, and I don't want to call it carnal standpoint. Correct. But from a humanistic, let's put it that way, Correct. standpoint. For me, love, there is a script. You know, a lot of people don't believe in the Bible. You know, they don't believe in that which is, you know, because this ain't about religion. You know Correct. what I mean? But there is a part in, in Second Corinthians, I believe it's in Second Corinthians, first or second. I know it's in there. I don't know the quite address, um, but it talks about love. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, uh, a couple of the things that it says is that love is kind. And, and it's in the book as well. Love is kind. Love, love is, is patient. patient. You know what I mean? Um, love, love doesn't bark. On, on one another nope. it doesn't find fault no nope. you you know what i mean and so when people say that um you know um if he you know people that are being abused a lot of times um that, say that's love that's love, He's love right. or there's a song out that says no pain no gain right and in my book i tell i say that that should only be referencing if you going to work out and trying to build muscles right well you that's the I mean? definition that we're trying to come up with was is why is everybody definition of love so different no one has the same definition of love. You is not hitting me upside my head and I'm calling my girlfriend and saying, yo, Stephanie, I just got hit upside the head because my man loved me. No. I'm not, we not, but you got some people <laughs> that who will justify that. that's last night's beating because I mop the floor wrong and I'm being serious I mopped the floor wrong so he wanted to teach me how to mop the floor right because he loved me so he hit me yeah that's some foolishness that's right some there. foolishness yes. but you do have people the sentence may not be th that extreme mm -hmm. but that's yeah. how it is yeah and then going back to that to that script if you look at that and it says love is all those good things it's kind it's it's patient it's it doesn't find fault you right. know what i mean and if it's all of those things where does abuse where does you know tearing down with words where does being rude disrespectful none of that should play into it no. so i think what we have come up to this preconceived notion of what we've seen what we've heard what we've experienced you know what i mean as Correct. kids a lot of us have watched our parents argue and fuss and fight you know i i did that you, you know what i mean right. and and it was profound um that um, my auntie sent me something the other day and as we're coming to our closing time my auntie sent me something um in the text in a uh, uh, text message and she said for me to watch it before you think about breaking up ever again. Right. And it it was a little skit of Miles Monroe. And, and what he said was so profound that people fall out of relationship because or they divorce and break up because they're not receiving something that they're expecting the other person to give them. He said that if you go into anything, any relationship, and you don't expect for them to do or give you anything, all you do is go in and loving them, concentrate on loving them and vice versa, because just like you expect something from them, they're expecting something from you. Yeah. So what if you both go into this relationship just with the, with the sole thought and the sole intent of just loving each other? You know what I mean? I'm going to concentrate and I'm going to work hard at loving you and you do the same thing for me. It means that then now because of what love is, the patient and the kind and, you know, not tearing down, but building up. Now you'll be more focused on doing all those things. Correct. You'll be patient. You won't be arguing and all of that. And then when it comes to the intimacy part, that will make that all the, the more better. That's like the Correct. icing on, on the cake. cake. Herbert said, in, in most cases, not knowing what love is, our mindset turns into survival and desperation. And that's real talk because people be looking and searching for love. I think you said that earlier. Right. Well, that comes into what you just said. Don't have an expectation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And love will flow. Yeah. But if you have an expectation then you're defining love. Love has no definition. Mm -hmm. And if you, your expectation is a definition. And that shouldn't be in the word love. Yeah. Yeah. And Chris, you're right. She said it's in 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. Yes. That's where it is. So when you talk about love and then, you know, creating this mirage of something that is. So like you said earlier, you know, um, you know, people getting beat, you know, because you ain't Correct. sweeping right, you ain't cooked the meal right, or, you know, 
people they calling you that's out your an name expectation and, and going all, exactly <laughs> right you, you know that's an you, expectation i but, expect you to Da, 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 but da, da, then da, da, on da, top da. of that, I do all of that, but then turn around and do do you good in the bed. Right. So now, then now, now, and that's what the because point that he I was, expects you to do that. Right. But yeah. I'm but even beyond that, what I'm saying is that that is connected to a feeling. Correct. That's connected to an emotion. You, you know what I mean? And so when those feelings and emotions start stirring up together, that that's where the love start. You think it's love right. because it feels good. Now, now you're emotional about it. You know what I mean? Right. When you're emotional about anything and it feels good at the same time, now you think that is love when it ain't love it's just a, a good feeling because in a lot of cases we've seen that on tv we see it you know statistically and again not just for women but for men too because i've seen a heck of a lot of women beating the hell out of some men right you, you know what i mean that don't do what they say and all of that so men get abused just like women get abused so we speaking you know um with regards to relationship as a whole if 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 that is something that is going on now how you know you need to know what is love love what what is it that you're looking for what what is it that you're expecting you you know what i mean and so now when you're not getting what it is that you're expecting that's where that mirage come in at and you create this mirage of this fantastic person that's a great provider and yeah he paying the bills and all of that but he talking to you like you crap you, you know what I mean? He He's making sure that you got food in the household. But when it comes to you doing something or having a conversation with you, he don't even want to talk to you. There's no conversation. There's no communication. So we really, really have to, you know, come to um, grips what it is that we're looking for, man. You know, and, 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 and I just want to um, say I was listening to... Um, a song today it always reminds me of poppy you know remember hawk my, my mama husband oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah he always <laughs> listened to um isaac hayes mm -hmm. and so it came on right before we was getting ready to come on the set and and i started writing down what some of the words says and it said cupid you know cupid shoots an arrow and sometimes you're not quick enough to get out of the way and once you're in it no matter how hard you try to get out of it, the more you wiggle, the deeper you sink. Right. And I thought that was like, you know, a powerful statement then because that's true. You know, a lot of us sometimes being in toxic relationships and you, we, we've been in it for so long. Right. You know what I mean? And we have, we've labeled um, that it is right and it is good, you know, because we have learned how to survive. Like Herbert said, you know, we survive um, um, out of desperation, if you will. Correct. We've learned how to survive in the toxic situation. So we create, you know, this mirage and this image of happiness and of what is good and what is pleasing, even when it's not. Right. And, and what we have to do is, you know, ask ourselves, how do we get up out of this? What is it that we need to do to, to, to remove ourselves from it? So, you know, with that being said, you know, we want to close. Gracie, you have any closing remarks no, before just we close out? Male and female, learn yourself. You know, um, I did have someone say that there's no possible way for you to love yourself. You know, learn yourself. Like being with yourself. Like making yourself happy and you will know what's right or wrong as far as a relationship is concerned to you'll know what is right and wrong and making someone else happy if you know there's things you know these things that you do to make yourself happy and once you have that in ep in you all that toxicity and all them relationships that you're looking for that are negative will be no more Okay, well, I have something to say, though. You said, someone said that there's no way that you could love yourself. Fall in love with Fall yourself. In. And I just beg to differ. You know, I've gotten to the place now that I love me. I love being with me. I look in the mirror now, and, and I say, you know, chick, I like you. You matter of fact, I'm in love with you. 
I'm, you know, I'm and so when you and when you can know, and I'm just saying that just to say to the people out there that someone may be thinking that oh she's what the people said well maybe this is why I'm going through what I'm going through. Maybe this is why I'm, I'm I lack self esteem because there's no way that I could be in love with myself. So then that would lead them into another situation that's worse than that. I'm just saying that um, I'm saying your yourself meaning your when we fall in love with a child or when we when we fall in love with our man. Think of that feeling. When you look in the mirror, you're falling in love at what you're looking at, which means your being. I didn't say that you couldn't fall in love with your being. I said you can't fall in love with yourself. You're falling in love with a look when you look in the mirror. No. You know, as me. far as not for you, because you're taking it to a whole spiritual level. Yes. People don't have that yet. Right. But, you understand what I'm saying? Right. So learn to be with yourself First, there's no way that you're going to look in a mirror tomorrow and say, oh, I'm falling in love with myself. Learn the things that you need to learn and then you'll be able to take it to that next level. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's it. God. That's Correct. the key point. God. Correct. You know what I mean? That's why he is so important. And it's not about religion. You know what I mean? And I think, yeah, it's a reason why we went there and we need to close with it there. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. You know right. what I mean? And regardless of how old you are, you have to develop a relationship with God your own way. Because the way that I did it, you may not do it. The things that, and you may not want to do it because it took for me to be go to go through hell. You, you know what I mean? Right. And a lot of different types of relationships for me to get to where I am with my relationship with him. So I've learned to, to personally um, love myself because I opened myself up for God to love me. And, and when that happens, then I don't depend on Gracie to Correct. love me the way that I expect to be loved. I don't even depend on my husband, you know, and that was the one teaching tool for me because it goes back to what we said earlier with Miles Monroe, the, the piece that he did about relationship and, and not depending on nobody, you, you know what I mean? To Correct. give you something or, you know, you have to learn to depend on you and God. You, you know what I mean? And the one thing that I learned from God, I was just sitting one day, I'll never forget. And I know I keep saying closing and we done went past our time, but I'll never forget. I was feeling very emotional. I had lost my mom, my dad, then my mom. And I just had buried my brother two years after that. Those were the three people that I knew for a fact that would be in my, my corner. You know, not my husband, not my children, my mama, my daddy, and my brother Greg, who was locked up. It was nothing that I went through or have gone through in life that I couldn't call either one or one of them that would make me feel content inside. So when I lost them, it was like I had nobody and nothing. I, I have a husband, yes, but he's not giving me what I need emotionally or what I thought I needed emotionally. Correct. And that was a pivotal point for me in my life where I learned that you can love yourself enough to where you don't depend on nobody to love you like that anymore. You don't depend on anybody to give you what it is that you need for yourself to feel fulfilled and feel whole. Correct. Only God can do that. You, you know what I mean? And when God does that and when he steps in and fill your void, listen, everybody else, including a spouse, will become the icing on the cake. Correct. And you know what I mean? Know how and to guess what? deal with that negativity and that abuse and you won't even step into it. Exactly. You'll put it in the bud or if it's not put in the bud and it's not going to be put in the bud, then that's not with the relationship. For that's you. it. That's but it. But listen, do you remember what we signed you on as far as your Facebook page was concerned? No, you asked me questions. Girl, you know if I don't write nothing down, I, I don't remember it right now. Because mine is Gracie. You can find me on YouTube under Gracie Ferguson. And I'm a cartoon girl. You okay, know, and right. Like, the YouTube piece, the YouTube for me is Unveiling Truths. Okay, 
and it was, it was under um, unveiling truth. Stephanie is unveiling truths, mm -hmm. and um, we would like you to subscribe to our channels. Gracie Ferguson, I'm the cartoon girl, and hers is unveiling truths. And we would like you to subscribe, like, and share. We have to close. Yes, and, and this I, and will I not think, be the last time yes. that you hear from us. <laughs> yes. So if you would like to say anything as far as this segment is concerned, because this was our new segment, so you got to work with us. Yes, you know. Yes. I see that someone said, "What made you go there?" We don't know what made us go there, but if something, somebody, yeah. something told us to go there. Yeah. You know. So we would like you to subscribe, like, share, comment, mm -hmm. and on our next segment, we'll do a pre a brief. You know scenario or if anybody commented and needed something cleared up or whatever the case may be but we definitely have to close and we will be doing let me say this i want everybody those who have not will be sharing different parts of my book if you haven't gotten it you can do so um you could go to unveiling truths again you can hit me up on my inbox on facebook um email me um ikea um, 888 at yahoo.com um, and this will be something that I will be doing once a week I'm, I'm led to come on once a week and, and it's, it's going to be unveiling truths table talk because we're going to be talking real stuff people are hurting out there people are going through real stuff and, and, and so and, and we can't just expect for the church to do everything. No, we play a part in that too. And sometimes, Correct. you know, people are not going to go into no church. You, you know what I mean? Right. And, and people are not going to talk to nobody from the church. I believe that we keep it 100 and we share our heart and we be real with folk. You know what I mean? Correct. And stop trying to hide behind the, the facade of of what it appears on the outside Correct. and you walking around all jacked up on the inside. You, you know what I mean? No more of that. This is Unveiling Truths, Real Talk, Table Talk. So I love y'all. Um, thank you, everybody, for thank joining you everybody in for our joining first session. Us. Thank you, Herbert. I appreciate thank that, you, that dialogue and the <laughs> feedback and all of that stuff. We appreciate that. And again, I love you guys. And until we meet again, may the Lord bless and keep you. Amen. And remember, be good to yourself because if you ain't good to you, ain't nobody going to be good to you other than God. But in order for him to be good to you, you got to open up and allow him to do the very thing that he predestined for you. All right. All right. Ciao. God bless. God good bless night. you. I think it needed to be on a longer. I don't know why it did that. Because I recorded before. <coughs> that was good. <coughs> okay, Mel, I know you was listening. I said, I know you was listening. I told you, you heard me. I told him, I'm putting up with beating. I <laughs> That's right. That's right. right. I'm talking about That's right. Right. I'm just talking about that. Oh, I said, oh, your mom know exactly what you're talking about. I said to put up this BS, and I'm not going to do it anymore. I thought he was going to comment or something. Oh, he was in there. It was a lot right. of people. Here you go. All right. Mm -hmm. I said, she know, she know you. You know what you think? And I wasn't even thinking about y'all. And guess what? You was hitting right over here. I was looking at him like, mm -hmm. she knows her. She knows me. See, I wasn't even. What you thinking about? Y'all did good. He didn't, he didn't tell me what it was. He didn't. Oh, you know, I went.